So hello, hello, hello. I'm Nicole Scott. This is Sasha Pallenberg, and this is Steve Chippy Payne. And we are three judges on the, in, uh, the Intel Ultimate Coder Challenge going perceptual. We're here at CBIT. We are. Which is why we're all together, because usually we don't hang out together all the time. No. Barcelona last week, Hanover this week. Yeah, but jet setting. There yeah. we go. Yay. It's jet set world. Yes, and we'd like to thank you all for your very verbose posts. <laughs> we managed. <laughs> Could you keep? Yeah, we love the words. I think we need. I think we need an executive summary. There could be. It could be extra points in it for people that do executive summaries. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was a little long. A little long. Yeah, but it's it's good. I mean, they're, they're, you've got to remember that they're, they're posting for coders, for people that are just interested in it for the first time, and for the judges as well. Right. So I guess right. can't avoid that, right? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to start at the top of the list here. We're going to start with the code monkeys. Oh yes. Yes. Your post was very short. Thank you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, seriously, guys. I mean, we, we just finished MWC, which is the busiest show of the year, in my opinion. Uh, even busier than, than, than CES, right? Because, I mean, it's all mo about mobile. And we are, we are writing about mobile, talking about mobile. And then just two days later, we have the biggest computer show in the world, which is CBIT. Thank God it's just not so... Um, it's not so busy in terms of launches, but still, I mean, uh, we are planning, we are in the, at the Intel booth here, we have a little studio here, and we're planning to do a live stream starting from uh, tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So trust me, we're quite busy, and uh, we're looking forward to read this. But we found the time, we found the time to read all of your posts, posts. yeah, we, and the video was good, the video was good. Um, I, th I thought it was a little bit of a cheat, a little bit, with the, the keep it simple, stupid, I mean, I, can, I I do appreciate the fact that it's a cop out. It's a little bit of a felt. It felt like a little bit Ooh. of a cop out. Maybe I'm not sure. I'm, I'm calling you guys out a little bit. But I I mean the fact that where, where was it at the bottom? You guys provided a uh, plugin or what was it? A zip file for to, to help everyone out. I thought that was very kind of you to kind of you know like uh, help sharing is caring. But and I also do I, I also do like that you switch from eye gaze uh, aiming mm -hmm. to gesture aiming. Um, I yeah, think, we talked you know. about this last week, didn't we? We said if you're going to do the eye tracking, it's going to have to be accurate for gaming. If not, then yeah, it's all probably not going to be worth it. But I, there's a couple of things in their post this week which echoed through other posts, which is yeah, eye tracking is difficult, yeah. and it doesn't seem it seems to be more. What did you call it? Ga gaze tracking, gaze yeah? Tracking. Which is knowing where the, the general direction of where the eye is looking, or if it's indeed looking at the screen, rather than exactly where the eye is looking. So, you know, trying to get eye tracking out of eye, out of just, what do you call it? Gaze, gaze tracking. Gaze tracking. <laughs> is obviously proving a little bit difficult. Um, and also, what was the other thing? They. Oh, yeah, the code that they're providing. All of them seem to be providing code. To, to, you know, for the other teams, which is great. So that yeah. is, that's gone through all the whole, like all of the posts. It's really good. Um, the, the the one thing that I I, I do want to touch in on, on on gaze on this gaze tracking because it was it was Lee's post where he showed us how gaze tracking worked in the SDK. Yeah. Where he had that black and red mask on yeah. his face and you could see where the nose was. And I and actually it, it reminded me of an interview that I had with one of the heads of the perceptual computing SDK like the whole thing and I remember being annoyed in the meeting being like what do you mean you don't have eye tracking like you know what is this like you know all the all the really important things that are going to happen like with this SDK are going to come out of the eye tracking and he, he said to me point blank we're doing gaze tracking we're not doing eye tracking he's like that's going to come in future this is a beta right so like maybe you guys are also too excited Right and like us, us, me, 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 me too, me too. I'm also, I'm not <laughs> totally guilty. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we're, just, we're just sitting next to these Toby, Toby. guys, right, yeah, which are right. doing <laughs> a, a pretty good uh, eye tracking demo over yeah. here. Yeah. Even with with Counter Strike, that was really cool. Yeah. Toby, the company that uh, uh, ten percent of which is owned by Intel now, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. But they have dedicated eye tracking hardware. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, yeah. I, and I don't think that the Creative Camera is the yeah. same deal as what Toby's doing with their hardware. Yeah. So, so well, actually, like, like, yeah. like maybe it might be a fair point for us to kind of say to everyone that's doing it, it's gaze tracking and me and it, and it's not yeah. eye tracking and like and like all the all the, all the detailed posts that I've been reading about pupil tracking and all, I I think the SDK might just be. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> the 
Sasha's okay. Sasha's okay. But um, we're not. We're not okay. We're not okay. We're clearly not okay. So there was obviously um, the, the, the CB Mesa guy is here calling on his his headphone. It's like it's the electronics. There's, there's power cables it's, and stuff in there. And there was a, a glass of orange. Yeah, there was a glass. So then there was orange juice all over the cables and the open sockets. Yeah, Sasha's gone off. So. Now. Sasha had to do a panel, so we're just going to finish it off. Right. Forgive the Let's do it. forgive the laughter. Where were we? Uh, we were just finishing Code Monkeys. We were just talking in right. general about 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 eye gaze and stuff like that. Who, and who's next then? Uh, who's next? Who's next on the list? Let me just hit back quickly. How about? Yeah, just pick one. Oh, infrared brass monkeys. They're they're next. Okay. All right. So you you guys actually you're guys. You guys are doing the pupil tracking. They're the ones that are working on, like, figuring out the exact, like, placement of the pupil. And, um, like, though, though I think this is one of the most exciting things about the, the SDK in the future, um, I don't know, like, and, like, everybody who's doing eye tracking or eye gaze is, is having trouble, right? So yeah. it may, maybe this might be too advanced for the SDK, considering when I sat in a meeting with the guys from the perceptual computing team, they said it was only gaze tracking and not eye tracking. And when, when Lee did that demo in the video about the nose pointing direction, like maybe this just isn't, maybe this is too soon. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. But uh, what I like about these guys is they've still got that uh, confidence and sort of momentum from last week. And, and um, the whole team seems to be rubbing off on the project. Uh, I think there's going to be some good, uh, good quality coming out of this because they have the confidence and. We should also talk about like team versus singleton as well. You know, there's there's three of the guys, and we really need to make this clear. There's three uh, guys that are working on their own as the team. So that that's Lee, Peter, and Eskil, I think. Eskil, yeah. And um, so from these teams that have their own art directors, etc., we'll be expecting a little bit more from you guys—a polished product and something a little bit more in terms of quality, right? Because yeah. yeah. you know, when you've got six people or an art team. That's uh, that's different to when you're sitting there for 29 hours like Lee was, like Lee was coding, yeah. Yeah. coding, yeah. So anyway, that's good. That's um, infrared five. Um, Simeon Squared, I've got here because uh, sure. he's um, he did a brief post and last week. We talked about how he was not not aiming for f total virtual reality, yeah. but we wanted to step back from that and just create a sort of yeah. But, uh, a different type of world, maybe. Yeah, you could create a world. Well, uh, in their post, uh, I don't know what the quote is. What was the quote? I've got to give you the quote because it's classic. It was um, about Unchained Melody. <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, oh my god! 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 Where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, we've made an accurate simulation of what would happen if you put a soft bit of clay near a rampaging ape demanding food. <laughs> 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 but what that means is, is they're having the same problem with the data and the data being a little bit fuzzy uh, There's a lot of errors in it, so they're going to be smoothing it out. So this you know they had um, They may not have intended it, but they're gonna have to step away from re reality anyway Because of the errors in the data So all the teams seem to have found that uh, there's errors and uh, variation in the data That's uh, and you can see that visually in Lee's video actually yeah. the spiky bits coming out of his shoulder or errors and he's gonna He's going to choose that, leave that as a feature. We'll come up to him in a minute. So, but I, the the one thing that I did appreciate about uh, actually every, everybody's post was that the the explanation for dealing with the data and like that that seems to be where everyone is right now. There's so much data produced and like whether you like the data or you don't, I mean, like each team kind of varied on on, on how they viewed yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but the the interesting thing that I thought was who chose to vet the information before it went into your program or inside of the program. Right. Right. I thought I thought that was a really like the the I guess the philosophy or the approach or the reasoning like behind the vetting of the information like whether it was like a, uh, a code that you wrote only to bring in certain data or how to deal with the mass amount of the data in in the program itself so I, th I thought I actually learned a lot and I appreciate that everyone took the time to include that yeah that's really yeah. important this is how a huge amount of data going through and it's one of the reasons I think they've chosen the algebra or it's one of the reasons the algebra is good for this project because it can handle a lot of data a lot of computation power there she's still laughing about this the trouble is 
just on the side. Yeah, it's the broken, see the broken thing. box, and there's people kind of like walking by with microphones pointing at it. <laughs> I can't look at a goal because I'm going to burst into laughter. Sorry. Was it one of the Eskil or Peter were talking about handling large amounts of data and actually putting in place uh, their algorithms for, yeah, like you said, parsing some of that data. Yeah. Um, so that it's more handleable. So that, that's interesting, and that, mm -hmm. that's something that you know the coders, any of you out there that are doing coding, read that detail and have a look at that because that's really important. I think. All right. Who do you have next? Next up. Um, six cents. Six, six cents. cents. Which I keep writing six cents er, six, or six six cents, cents, but it's six ends. Six ends. Um, I, l I like that you corrected us on our marionettes. But like that, you're just like, no, guys, <laughs> yeah, yeah. scale it back. <laughs> I don't know. You, like, we get like you, you. get us excited with your posts. Yeah. Like that's the thing, right? Is like, like we read them and like like we're excited with you, right? And like we're reading along. And it, thank you for calling us back because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that actually, was... it looks like most of them actually uh, watched our video. Ah, so that would be the seven views we got on the video last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so these is, this is a big team. They've got this is the team with the you know a lot of art. No, yeah, there's a yeah, lot of art lot going of art. on here, yeah, right? A lot of art. Uh, Love the story, the three little pigs. I think that that's fantastic. Yeah, they're they're, they're going with the three little pigs. They're gonna uh, the the art's the same for the pigs, yeah. and they wear different outfits. A surfer pig or whatever it was. The and they worked out how to do uh, video recording in yeah. Unity. Yeah. Uh, which would be great for the end users to record their experience in this 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 world. In the inside the story, so that'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, like, like just like briefly looking at the paragraph where it talks about Cam Studio or VLC. I would like, um, I think other developers may have appreciated a little bit more technical data. I mean, the paragraph is perfect for me. I mean, I'm not, you know, but I think that like maybe with the vetting process with Unity, that might have been a little more interesting for some, like yeah. just to figure out why you went with one over the other. But that, that's that's a minor detail. I mean, I'm just I'm picking on you. <laughs> um, but I like the the single frame artwork for like the the different stories and that it's a modern twist and you know it's good, it's good. I have, right. Yeah. So um, we've got the two guys, Eskil and Peter, and um, um, uh, uh, Lee, Lee, of course. <clears throat> so let's let's do those three. Okay. Sing, should we start off with Lee? Let's start off with Lee. Loved the video, Lee. Yeah. Friggin really loved the video. I, I, I don't know quite what he's... Well, I know what he's doing, but I don't know quite how he's... I'd like to know a bit more, Lee, about how you've mapped this image of you or, uh, or whether you're taking a flat video and sending it and then creating the 3D on top of that. I don't know how he's doing that. But it, cool. go and watch the video because it's really good. It really demos the sort of stuff that's going on here. And it's a brilliant video. It's it really brilliant. is. It's really brilliant, and well, I and I agree with you that you should leave the fuzziness in. Like I think it, I, th I think it's a cool holographic feature. Like, like you kind of like, woo. And it makes it somehow look true. Uh, yeah. You know, this is a demo. Um, you, we're not expecting totally polished end results from these uh, single guy, single uh, team, single person teams. Um, so leave that in. That's that sort of proves that there's a whole load of data going on there that's falling outside, you know, normal parameters. So well, and the, and then plus, like I th I think the concept of the of, of the entire program also lends itself to this whole holographic kind of ending. I think, I think yeah, like I I hundred percent think it's cool. Like it's got something there. Like really. yeah, like even if oh. it was polished around, I'm not. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and Lee, twenty nine hours coding in one go. Be gotta careful. Be, gotta be back for your heart or something. Be careful. <laughs> Don't push yourself too hard, please. Um, Eskil, uh, he reckons he's finished his beta, which is interesting because this framework he is creating doesn't. He hasn't actually integrated the perceptual computing hardware yet. So yeah, the camera's not in play, but. Uh yeah, which I was a little disappointed, but then at the same time, like it's quite a big, like the the GUI is yeah. quite a lot of work, yeah, and like yeah, yeah. and like getting all these other things go. I, it is it is totally fair enough, but at the end of the video, thank you so much for like totally holding my hand and walking me through it. it like it's a it's it's fantastic, like the the whole concept behind it, and I love the application at the end because it does have a visual wow. 
Yeah. Right. And like, 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 just like the visualization of big data, and like, you can easily just see how like the manipulation with the fingers was. It's, it's just going to turn into a, a gesture manipulation yeah, in the end, so. which I hope is that's going to translate well. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. like, it will. Be, that really is the minority report. That load of data up on the screen, data, yeah. moving the data around. Yeah. Move, that that is the minority report. That is the minority scenario. report yeah. scenario, and I, so I think it could it's be a great demo at the end. I did fantastic. Really worry. He's building a framework, then he's got to do the integration of perception computing hardware on top of that. I don't. I hope you have time, Peter. Oh, sorry, SQL. I hope you have time. I have faith. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I really want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll finish off with Peter. 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 You are very verbose. <laughs> there are a lot of words. A lot of words. <laughs> yeah, but then again, there's a lot of code there, a lot of information. Uh, Peter also has found the same problem with the um, um, the data, the quantity of data. He's also got the same issue in that he's having to go for third-party open source libraries to speed him up. And that's what, all, I mean, both Lee and Peter are doing that. And that's, that's a great way to speed up your uh, development if you're a, a single-person team. Um, I've I got a couple of notes here. Um, uh, blah 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 blah. Yeah, <laughs> he's got a lot of data going on in his in yeah. his app. Uh, I think we mentioned it last time. Is the Ultrabook going to be uh, powerful enough for this? It's um, yeah yeah. I mean, that, that's I mean that's a question for all of the teams, I guess. Do you think the Ultrabook is going to be powerful enough to crunch all the, all the data you've got on here in a in a nice way, in a in a polished way for a polished uh, uh, result? Some more. Um, maybe I got one. No, I didn't get my notes mixed up. Yeah. So Huda is moving on, and I think Peter's basically just in coding world right now. Yeah. Yeah. No. And like, and like a, a lot of it kind of went over my head a little bit, just because like there's like it's very technical with how you're dealing with the data, um, which is fantastic. I mean, like the SDK does produce just an enormous, enormous sum. So. Being able to vet and figure out the process behind that, I think, did require such a almost justified such a verbose post. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's one for the coders. It's one for the coders. We loved it. Yeah. Yeah. So, like in summary, then, yeah, it really is a coding week. And I got a feeling next week is going to be another really deep coding week for these yeah. guys as well. They're going to have to start um, prioritizing now. So the cool features they wanted to slip in maybe on the side, they'll have to you know work out whether they've got time for those. It's time to work towards the end of your you know alpha phase and then do feature freeze, work on the betas, and uh, you know really only four weeks to go, yeah, four four yeah. Or five weeks. Yeah. yeah. No, and like though in the beginning I did say that maybe Code Monkeys was copping out. I think it, it is just being a, a realistic about what you can get done in the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and uh, I think that. I'm going to be personally a lot more forgiving in this moment with those who have chosen to do detailed eye tracking because I, I just, I'm, I'm not sure if the SDK is going to produce because just, yeah, yeah. just, just the way that everyone's been having such a hard time with it, um, it's, and then plus the perceptual computing guys told me it was gaze tracking and then yeah. with Lee's video seeing the way that it worked, I think it is going to be quite difficult to do like something as accurate as like aiming within a game at like like a gunship, right? And like there's missiles coming at you, right? How big are the missiles going to be for the eye tracking to work ac accurately? So I mean, redesigning your entire game in order to ha have accuracy may be problematic at the stage, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. Um, we've got nothing more to say, I guess, except good luck for next week. And uh, we won't be together next week. In fact, we won't be together again until GDC, which is uh, mid -mar end of March. End of March. So there won't be any videos next week, but um, definitely check out our post. If you're watching this and you're not part of the, the, the uh, competition, but you are a coder interested in VR, 3D, gesture space, eye tracking, gaze tracking, check out all those posts. There's loads of coding information, loads of information about the de development platforms, the problems, the data handling. Check it out, yeah? Yeah, we'll, we'll have a link in the description of, of the video uh, so you can go directly to the Ultimate Coder Challenge going perceptual. Yeah, website. <laughs> website. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, Steve Chippy Payne from Ultrabook News, and I'm Nicole Scott from Mobile Geeks. Thanks for watching. Thanks We're for now watching. off to see uh, Sasha's okay. Where's yeah. the first aid center? Oh God, where's the first aid center? <laughs>